Hi everyone, it's me, Ellen Torp. I feel like I need a better introduction these days. So uh, what about this? What's up everyone? This is me, Ellen Torp, and also known as Bungalow 5. For um, the last decade, I have been writing about interior design on my blog, Bungalow 5. But um, lately, I have been spending more time making videos on this wonderful channel called YouTube, because we all know that um, no one reads anymore. Not even the small captions on Instagram. But today I'm taking you on this beautiful tour around Copenhagen, checking out some of the most amazing designs and architecture right here in Copenhagen. And it's by a designer called... Um... Okay, let's see if you can guess who. He would have celebrated his 120th birthday in 2022. He uh, designed this very hotel right here, the Sass Royal Hotel in the middle of Copenhagen. He also designed some of the most recognized chairs in the world. One is called the Swan, the other one, the Egg. Have you guessed? It's Anne Jakobsen. And together with Anne Tradition, who put together this incredible tour today, well, I believe it's going to be an amazing tour. We will check out a lot of his architecture and designs around Copenhagen. First, we're going to tour this very hotel right behind me because there is one of the original suites still standing. It's, it's pretty unique. And I'm also very excited because our mode of transport. The original SAS bus designed for the Royal Hotel in the 1960s. It wasn't designed by Anne, but nevertheless, it's super cool and I am very excited to get on board. But first, it's all about one of Anne Jakobsen's most celebrated buildings, the SAS Royal Hotel from 1960, now known as the Sass Radisson Blue Hotel. As you enter its lobby, you'll quickly notice all Anna's most recognized designs, like the swan and the egg. But also newer designs, like the loofer chair and sofa by Space Copenhagen 4 and Tradition, which were all added with the recent remodel of the hotel. Anne never did anything halfway, so when creating this hotel, he went all in, designing everything from door handles to silverware to all the furniture. One of his other trademarks is also the stunning spiral staircase you see in the middle of the lobby. On the sixth floor is the Anne Jakobsen Suite, room 606, the only room left untouched in the hotel despite decades of renovations, serving as a time capsule of Danish mid-century modern design. The furniture pieces were first introduced at the hotel, but not exclusively made for it, which is why they quickly started to be mass-produced so we could all appreciate them for decades to come. And really now, the moment we have all been waiting for, getting on this 1960s bus. It's all original, it's so cute. They even made the small stamp tickets. I'm loving it. <laughs> you know, if I know I need a hat, I need a little, uh, I need a little waistcoat, a little hat. Um, <laughs> got all the angry, angry bikes. <laughs> When the hotel first opened, it doubled as an airport terminal with guests booking seat in the lounge before being shuttled off to their flights in the SAS bus. Very, very much. I don't even know where to begin. This is just incredible. I feel like I would have done a very good job living in the 60s 
going back and forth to the airport from the hotel in this bus. We set off through the streets of Copenhagen, passing another of Arne's buildings, the Danish National Bank, before heading towards Sjælundlund, a suburban area on the north coast of Copenhagen, with a quick stop at the iconic Arne Jakobsen gas station from 1938. Quite the coincidence because there's a lot of other vintage cars here today as well. So uh, pretty fun. The gas station was nicknamed the Pelhatten or the Mushroom because of its ellipse-shaped canopy roof. It's really a functionalist masterpiece signaling purity and cleanliness. So we now made it to the beach. It's called the Bellevue Beach, which is 700 meters long. And on the opposite side of the beach is the theater and buildings Anne Jakobsen also designed in the 30s. This is probably the most iconic beach in Denmark. And I know I keep saying iconic all the time, but it feels like and seems like everything Anne Jakobsen did back in the day has become so iconic, including this beach area where he designed the lifeguard towers, uh, which is right here behind me, and the small kiosks as well. And then, of course, as I just mentioned, the buildings on the other side. It is truly one of the most stunning beaches we have here, uh, just north of Copenhagen. I remember when I was younger, in my 20s, this was the place to be. So, all the cool kids. I don't know if I was a cool kid, but anyway, I, I wanted to be a cool kid. We all went here as often as we could during the summer, because this was where you would hang out, all day long jumping in the ocean and enjoying the beautiful scenery. I don't know if we appreciated Anne Jakobsen's magnificent design back then, but these days this is where you want to come if you want the best of both worlds being the beautiful beach and beautiful design. Let's just take a quick moment and appreciate the characteristic blue-striped, almost cartoonish lifeguard towers. As you might know, we have a pretty liberal uh, way of living here in Denmark. So uh, all beaches you can actually uh, take all your clothes off. Which is, um, well, we have decided that um, parts of the beaches is our clothing optional and that is at the very end. So if you're into that whole scene, there's a place for you here at Bellevue Beach as well. But the, the rest of the beach, usually um, people we close. As mentioned, this whole area is literally all Anne. On the opposite side of the street is his Bella Vista apartment buildings, also so pure and clean. Just look at all the curves. It's almost giving you a sudden Europe vibe. There are 68 apartments in this complex from 1934. Just next door is the Bellevue Theater. It's one of the most prominent buildings in the Bauhaus style in Denmark. The theater opened in 1963 as a summer theater and you'll see in just a second. The roof actually opens. Also notice the stage and balcony is covered in bamboo and the seats is where you first saw Anna's iconic curved chair which of course we all know now from his end chairs. We had one more stop before heading back to the city. The stop I was mostly excited for as I have never visited this one before or rather been inside because I have driven past many times before. 
The Ruder Dahl Town Hall, designed in 1939 by Arne and fellow architect Fleming Lassen. The town hall was inspired by modernist Swedish architect Gunnar Asplund. The duo designed a wedding room with accompanying furniture, including the Mayer sofa, which is produced by a tradition today. The sofa was actually created to be placed in the waiting room for the bride and groom to sit in before they were able to get married. A quick tour of the white bus because I just can't get enough of it. And it's most likely the only time I will ever be able to be on it as it's in a museum most of the time. The bus drove passengers from Royal Hotel to the airport for their flights and was designed by Bent Severi. This bus was actually put together by three original buses which sadly ended up in the most random places. One was even used as a hen house. Can you imagine? Anyway, look at all the details. Isn't it just amazing? Now there was only one last thing on the agenda, coffee at the beautiful little Petra Cafe in Antradition's courtyard. While here, I just had to sneak up to see their newly remodeled showroom with all the beautiful design pieces they have, including the Maya sofa. So, I really hope you enjoy this little tour with me and Anne around Copenhagen and a special thanks to Anne Tradition for organizing this trip. It was so much fun. If you're ever in Copenhagen, maybe you can go on your own little Anne tour and remember to uh, visit the showroom of Anne Tradition. It is absolutely beautiful. It's right in the middle of Copenhagen and they actually also produce some of Anna's pieces that we've seen already today, but also a lot more pieces, which are all stunning, Anna or not. Thank you guys all for watching. I really appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, remember to subscribe and hit that little notification bell right there in the middle as well. Thank you again, until next time.